اللهم اجعلنا من الصابرين آمين يا رب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين So um, Alhamdulillah it's a great honor to share this podium with uh, such a well esteemed uh, scholars and speakers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this talk a beneficial for each and every one of us inshallah um, so the topic which I have in front of me is how to deal, how or why difficulty comes actually. I'm just going to mention four things, inshallah. One thing is a real life story which just happened to me a few months back, um, and three uh, academic points, and we'll try to make it practical, inshallah. One is um, why difficulty comes, and there are some misunderstandings which we have in our community regarding those misunderstandings. Um, how to actually tackle those. Second, uh, what we have to do when we are facing difficulty and troubles in our life, how to react. And third, the difference between the difficulty or the trial and punishment. So these three things, inshallah, I'm going to mention. Um, but before that, I will have to start with the story. But before the story, just please smile. Can you all smile right now? And please, I can see people are sitting at the back, although there are empty seats. If you can move up, sisters and brothers both. That will be great. I don't have to remind you again. I hope that your one reminder will benefit all of you. There are still empty rows. If you can move up, Jazakumullah khairan. I haven't seen a movement yet. Please, can you move? Don't, don't. Oh, yeah, mashallah. That's a first mover's advantage in marketing terms, mashallah. Okay. Jazakumullah khairan. So we have five, six people who are awake, alhamdulillah. So let's start. Um, you know, there is a reason why I'm saying this to you. Um, as a teacher, you will ask any of the teacher. The people who are sitting at the back, back benchers, they are the most naughty boys and girls in the class, right? So I don't want you to come in the category of naughty, and alhamdulillah, that's very, that's very good of you, alhamdulillah. So let's just start the story. So this happened to me anonymously that a Thursday night, we got the call in our masjid that we have a janazah of a 21-year-old sister. And um, as, as a Muslim, it moves your heart when you see a young person leaves you. Um, and she was a college student from our community. So we were preparing for the janaza. After the janaza, and still I was thinking about the same thing, what could have happened? After the janaza, I was sitting in my office after the burial, uh, maybe Friday after Asr. I got the phone call from the local hospital and they said they want to speak to Imam. I said, okay, yes, this is Imam, tell me. So they said, we are looking for Imam to come and visit because we have another, a sister called a 19 year old she just came out of coma, and we want you to visit because she is Muslim, she needs a religious advice. As a chaplain, we need, to visit, we need you to visit her. So I said, what's going on? I just read, uh, we are just done with the janaz of a 21-year-old sister, and now there's a sister, 19-year-old, from our community, she came out of coma. I said, okay, I will come. I went into the hospital, and I had the conversation, and I want to share that conversation with you, inshallah. I found out that actually that was drugs abuse case. The first question which I asked her is that, can I share this story with people anonymously? So she said, yes, please. I asked her to start with that, how much religious you were from the scale of one to 10? So she said, I wasn't religious, Imam. Maybe one, if not less than one. I said, okay. I said, um, would you like to give any advice to all the young people? Because now, although she said she wasn't religious, but on that day I felt Iman in her heart as she was speaking to me. She had a huge regret of why she did that. So I said, do you want to advise any young boys and girls about this? So she said, yes, I have your advice. And just mark this advice down, not from coming from Sheikh or Imam. This is coming from a 19-year-old sister who came out of coma. The first advice she gave to all the young boys and girls, Muslim community, select your friends wisely. And again, this is not any Imam giving Friday speech <laughs> that you have to sleep at that. No, this is... You have to put things in perspective. What could have happened? That this 19-year-old sister went into the coma, drugs abuse case, you can imagine what could have happened. That she's saying the first thing, select your friends wisely. Second, always listen to your parents in this age. And I actually asked her, we have to listen to parents all the time. What about this age? So she said, when you are young, especially teenager in that age, you think your parents are idiot, right? Just because you know how to use a smartphone, it does not mean that your parents are idiot. Maybe your parents doesn't know how to unlock the super smartphone. But they have one thing which we don't have, and that is experience of life, which you cannot learn from Google, alayhi salam, no. So that's the second thing. 
The third thing she said, and an advice, that stay away from drugs, drugs can take your life. At this point, I asked her, I said, I really appreciate your advice, sister, but drugs didn't take your life, you are alive, right? You know what she said? She said, yes, Imam Asif, but drugs take the life of my elder sister. You heard Janaza today in your masjid. And this is not the fictional story, this happened to me. And just like your reaction, my reaction was worse than this. Because I was talking to her. As I'm speaking to you right now, I can visualize her lying on the bed of ICU talking to me. You know why I'm telling you this story? The last question I asked her, I said, I went there to give her advice, but I got the advice of my life, subhanAllah. I asked her, just tell me, why do you think Allah have done this to you? And I was really expecting she will say, I don't know. Or she might say, because he hates me. You know what she said? She said, it is because Allah loves me. And she wasn't religious at all before this. And I was mesmerized. I said, how can you say this after all this? She said, see, ma'am, ethically speaking, I was doing something wrong. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me life. And he gave me a reminder. And he gave me a huge regret in my heart. I won't go back to the drugs again. So he loves me. There's same problem, same calamity, but a different perception how you see that. And all the musibat, calamity, difficulty actually is about the perception. And that's what we'll talk today, inshallah. Why calamity, difficulty, adversity in any form or shape at the individual level, collective level, family level, social level comes? Why a pious individual have to go through a tough divorce? Why the engagements are broken, even though you might not have done something wrong? Why you will become jobless? Why you will select one major, but you will end up in doing something completely different? This happens to all of us, right? Don't start giving dirty looks to each other. This happens to all of us, right? <laughs> yeah, I just completed fashion designing, she read, <laughs> and I ended up in becoming Malvi <laughs> So, And I'm very happy, alhamdulillah. But why that problem or difficulty comes? Before I can tell you the Islamic unique standpoint, let me tell you some of the misunderstanding and misconception which we have in a global Muslim community. One of the big problems about believing in Islam without knowledge is that we become paranoia. So we are those, one of those religions who believe in the jinn and the magic and the concept of evil eye. So you know what happened when any bad thing, whenever any bad thing will happen, difficulty, you know what will happen? There must be a jinn. I lost my job. There must be a jinn, Imam. No, you are a jinn yourself. You need to go on time. <laughs> I'm fighting with my wife. There must be a jinn. No, 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 no. You don't need one. <laughs> Even Jin might think, oh man, you are so talented. I thought, uh, I did not have done sajda, but I should have done sajda to you, man. <laughs> That's one. Put every blame on magic, Jin. I'm not denying the fact that these creation exist. Please don't misconstrue me. This is part of our religion. But don't become paranoia. That whatever is coming, you are failing to accept the responsibility and you're putting blame on each and every outside factor. That's one misunderstanding which we have in our community. Second, Whenever something bad will happen, if you will ask yourself why this is happening to me, you think, maybe Allah is punishing me. I was not praying five times a day and this happened to me. Not necessarily. Not all the time. Because if we will associate these difficulties and these problems in our life with the punishment, then how would you justify the problems in the life of prophets? They were tested severely. We cannot even imagine in that way. And they were the most beloved people of Allah. They didn't do these sins what we do left and right. They were ma'asum, protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So obviously this technique won't work there. The third misunderstanding which we have, are you counting down? The first, first was putting blame on jinn. Second, the sign of punishment. And third misunderstanding, that maybe Allah doesn't love me. That's why this is happening. See, Allah love him, that's why he gave him BMW. I only have Nissan Altima. I don't have that, by the way, I have Honda Odyssey, uncle's car. <laughs> but we sometimes think because Allah doesn't love us, that's why Allah is giving us hard time, difficulty, adversities, and so on and so forth. Even that is not justifiable. You know why? The most beloved people are worthy prophets, again. And they face some humongous, gigantic trials in their life. So even we can't say this. That this is real in that case also. That is happening because of Allah's aid. So now the question comes, why difficulty comes? 
why calamity comes. And Islam have a very unique standpoint. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah ta'ala idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. Sunan Tirmizi. Of the Ravat and Akhir, Inna Allah ta'ala idha ahabba qawman ibtalahum. Mu'jimu Tibrani. He said that when Allah loves someone, he tests him. <laughs> he puts him under difficulty. So in Islam, we are actually supposed to think different way. Whenever you are facing difficulty, you have to think this is a sign of Allah's love, first and foremost, before you can think of anything else. This will change your perception, subhanAllah. So Allah knew that I won't be happy with that person in marriage. I have the bad experience, so now I can learn with the experience. And Allah took that person away from me and in my marital life. So in the long term, I can live a peaceful life, short term stress. But Alhamdulillah, this is a sign of Allah's love. But it's hard to justify. How can we justify that problems and difficulties are a sign of love of Allah, right? I will give you an example. I have two kids. Uh, Fatima and Hibban. My four, little one is Hibban, four-year-old. If I'll go to my son Hibban and I'll say, Hibban, I love you. Tapak! Abba, what kind of love is this? <laughs> he will ask me. If Allah is saying, I'll send you punishment and that's a sign of love, you have to rationalize this, how it is possible that difficulty, calamity, which hurts us emotionally, sometimes physically, is a sign of Allah's love. Point number one, or maybe a thinking, a way of thinking number one, is that you know that Allah knows more than me and you. Maybe that job was distracting me and Allah, that job was distracting you and Allah. So you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, He kept you jobless for four or five months. You came close to Allah, you start praying tahajjud, you became active volunteer in masjid and then Allah gave you another job. Does this happen all the time that people are far away from Allah and then something will happen and they will come close to Allah? Sign of Allah's love, like a bitter medicine. There is another way of looking at this. There is a hadith which is uh, where in Tirmizi where Rasulullah mentioned that through all these calamities and difficulties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate our status in dunya and akhirah. Will forgive our sins if we are patient on that. And then there is another unique standpoint Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah brought in his book. I never found this from any other scholar, subhanAllah. Ibn al-Qayyim says, how we can say difficulty and calamity are sign of Allah's love or sign of Allah's mercy. He says, sometime when you are used to getting good life, good standard of life, luxury in life, and if you are not grateful, your heart or ego and arrogance will creep in your heart. Until a point will come and you will think, who can mess with me? I'm the best in the business. If I'm going in community, everyone is saying salam to me. Everyone is respecting me. Whether socially, even financially, whatever I actually touch, it turns into gold. And actually, sometimes it can make you ego and arrogant person if you are not a grateful person. And what this ego and arrogance can do with your heart, it can not only destroy your dunya, but it can destroy your akhirah. So what Allah does out of His immense mercy and love, He destroys you in dunya to save your akhirah. So that you can become humble and at least in akhirah we can get jannah. But our dunya will be destroyed. He gives the example of a reactive person but become proactive, become grateful so we don't have to face that difficulty which will force us to become uh, grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are few uh, indication of love and mercy of Allah's uh, immense mercy and love why he sends musibat and difficulty and calamity. This was point number one. Actually, speaking on that, the Arabic word is musiba, the ayah which I recited from Surah Taghavun. The Arabic word is musiba, used for calamity, for disaster. So, the word musiba, if you will go and check the dictionary, especially Mufradat al Quran by Imam Raghib al Asfahani, he says musiba back in the days before Quran was revealed is not used for the calamity. It was used from musiba min al asaba saham. He says musiba was used when a person will going to hit an arrow and when that arrow will reach to a right target, if that he reaches to a right target, that will be called as musibah. And why this word is coined as musibah or calamity in Islam, you have to actually reconcile. When Allah sends musibah, when Allah sends difficulty and calamity, for just like an arrow reaching to a right target, your position of the elbow, timing, placement have to be perfect, right? The timing of that musibah have to be perfect. So in short, we cannot say, Allah, why this time? I just started my career and I have to face all this. No, timing is perfect. 
So timing is out of equation because the word musibat is used, subhanAllah. Look at the life of Yusuf Ali Islam. This won't work with me, by the way. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking, inshallah. I'll try to finish. Um, this uh, musibat, you have to see the life of Yusuf Ali Islam. Um, when he was thrown in well, at that particular time, the caravan came, not the Dodge caravan, the other caravan came, and they picked Yusuf Ali Islam. At that time, Timing was the key for, for this difficulty. He was in the prison. He wanted to come out, but he could not come out. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that the time will come when the king of the Egypt will see a dream, and that will become your source to become the minister of Egypt. So timing is perfect in whatever difficulties are coming. So in short, you know, in English, or um, if you'll Google it, you will see a lot. You'll, they, they say in English that difficult roads often lead to a beautiful destination. But if you are patient, and if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the first thing. I will conclude the last two things rather quickly. Uh, second thing which I want to say, actually, what we have to do when you're facing difficulty or calamity. Um, so once Rasul, actually before I can tell you that hadith, ayah pop up in my mind right now. You know in Surah Baqarah, we are supposed to say something whenever we are facing difficulty. Is that, asabatum musiba qalu? Oh shoot! Is that? No. <laughs> Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Whenever we are facing any difficulty in life, we have to say what? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. A common myth is whenever any Muslim passes away, we have to say this. No. Whenever any bad thing happens in your life, you have to say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So in short, don't do this by the way when you get married. Look at your spouse. Say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. <laughs> no. On, on a, okay, I, this was to grab your attention. Coming back on a serious note. What does it mean? You know, many times we say this askar, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah, MashaAllah, without thinking, Inna lillahi become one of those. Inna lillah. First part is, everything is belong to Allah. He is the owner of Allah. He is the owner of everything. Allah is the owner of everything. Wa inna ilayhi rajiun, and we ourselves will go back to Allah. Whenever any problem comes, say this with thought, and you will not, you not feel, you will not feel any stress. I'll give you an example. For the last three, four years, I'm traveling a lot, locally, nationally, and internationally. Whenever locally I will travel, I will get a car from Enterprise most of the time because I have the membership card with them. I'm not promoting them. So, you know, when you get a rental cars, they will give you some new, brand new cars. Chrysler, my favorite Dodge Charger, yeah. And especially you will love these cars when you yourself have Honda Odyssey 2007, right? <laughs> yeah, hashtag embarrassment. Okay, coming back. Even though I love the cars, the drive is so smooth, transmission, steering, but you know what? In the evening, I have to return this car to Enterprise. I know that I'm not the owner, even though I love those cars. Who is the owner? Enterprise. Now Allah gave you this job. You didn't deserve to start with, and after six years Allah took it back. Why are you complaining? Who gave you that job? Inna lillah. Subhanallah. Wa inna ilayhi rajun. And Allah took this job, one day Allah will take you also. Why are you complaining? If we will say this from the bottom of our heart, Subhanallah, nothing can bother us in terms of stress, distress, and um, mental health, inshallah. Um, what, what we have to do, just very quickly, inshallah, I know I have two and a half minutes remaining. Um, I hope, inshallah, um, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, walking by and there was a woman who was crying, uh, and she was crying on the grave of her son. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised her, ittaqi la wasbiri, have a conscience of Allah, O woman, and have patience. Um, now, you know, when someone passes away in your family and someone advises you to be patient, it's an emotional moment in your life. And she doesn't know who Rasulullah sallallahu was. So she reacted. She said, anni. In our language, we might translate, mind your own business. Who are you? You don't have any idea of what I'm going through in my life. Looks very similar, right? Relevant. All of us do this. Rasulullah was advising her to be patient, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but his patience was tested, subhanallah. And he had more than enough idea of how she's feeling because he lost his three sons. Well, he left. She was later told that this was Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So she went to apologize. And Rasulullah said these five words. If you make these five words part and parcel of our life, wallahi, our life will become easy. He says, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدَمَةِ الْأُولَى He said, the the patience or the real patience or the real reward of patience is when the calamity strikes you first. After that, it's not patience. 
So when you receive the WhatsApp message, someone passed away in your family, loved one, how you react, that will going to decide whether you will get pay, a reward for patients or not. When you get the email from your boss, you are fired. <laughs> Hopefully not, but if you'll get the email. That reaction will going to decide whether we are uh, doing patient or not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be patient, inshallah. Do I have any time? No? Okay, last minute. Okay, just last minute, because I want to finish the topic, inshallah. Um, and coming back to the last and final thing, inshallah. What's the difference between the trial, difficulty, and punishment? And just to summarize, the first thing is, all the trials are the sign of love and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, how to react, we already discussed that, okay? But there are a few exceptions, and you have to understand this. There are something in your life which you will do as your own mistake. You had to make efforts, you didn't make efforts, and therefore you were, being, you were punished for that. That is different than whatever concept we discuss. I'll give you an example. If you are driving a car, let's say 90 miles per hour, what will happen? Eventually you might get a ticket. Unless you have the GEICO insurance policy, that's the copy of the Quran on the dashboard, right? <laughs> no, 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 don't try that. Okay, when you will get the ticket, and you will see the ticket and you will say, you know why I get this musibah? Because Allah loves me. <laughs> no, this is not the sign of Allah's love, this is a sign that you are idiot. <laughs> because you are driving fast. This is not that trial, this is punishment. So when you had uh, an area of making an effort and you didn't make an effort, and then you will be punished. This won't come under the trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will come under the category as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even that have the, um, the indication of the love and mercy because Allah wants you to come back through that punishment. But just make sure you differentiate. If we won't differentiate between punishment and the trial, you know what will happen? You will go into the two extremes. Sometimes you will blame yourself for everything. Have you seen those people? And sometimes you will end up in blaming Allah for everything. You have to find that right balance and hopefully inshallah we will find that. And um, I hope that you will enjoy the conference. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.